Hello, everybody. Ian Barkin here. Welcome back to the next episode of One Take Live coming at you over LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, we took a little bit of a break for a few days as uh, we upscaled some things. We noticed a, a cool new starter video, which was pretty funky. Hope you like that. Um, if you didn't, let us know what we can do to make it better. Um, also, uh, have switched to a different uh, tech platform. So we're doing this over something called uh, StreamYard now. We used to use Social Live. If anybody's interested at all in the the, the technical geekery of doing live streaming, uh, reach out. May, uh, may even do a show on on all the things we've learned over the uh, the thirty six episodes we've done, and uh, tinkering with every sort of tool. Uh, tech and permutation. Um, so this show's a really interesting one for a few different reasons. I'm going to start with a bit of a backstory on one take uh, and then welcome my guest and then get on with a very sort of meta show about a show, if you will. Uh, and while I do it, I will remind you when we're live streaming, please, please do share that you've joined us uh, and where you're joining us from. We got a great turnout already. So thanks so much. Um, hello to Dane uh, and to Mai. Uh, hello, Mai. Hello, Gloria I'm from El Salvador. Still love saying that. Um, Maria, hello. Derek Hall, hello. Kaylin Webb, Paula uh, Buckman. Um, yes, Paula Buckman. Um, I think the opening was quiet. We'll figure out if we add music to that. Should we? We probably should, so it doesn't seem like the sound's not working. Um, who else? Marcy Sigmund, hello. Sarah Taylor, welcome. Um, so, uh, also, I'll remind you, uh, share questions in the feed, the way that you just shared your um, your presence in the feed, and we will um, address them. So let me give you a bit of backstory on one take, uh, and then we'll get on with the with the show. So uh, one take was uh, was an idea and inspiration uh, that we had for for a while, uh, probably a few years, uh, and there was always a debate whether we do it just audio or do a video. Is it more work and more trouble than it's worth if you do both? Um, but ultimately, uh, we decided to go with both, uh, and we went real formal. We had a studio. Uh, we had a studio, and uh, we still do have a studio at the headquarters, uh, Sykes Enterprises downtown Tampa. A really cool studio. So we did the first few episodes there. And then COVID. So we all got sent home, of course, um, to uh, to continue on and try to figure out the best way to, to, to power on and power through. And uh, I'd always had this, this chance and this opportunity to live stream over LinkedIn. And it's still in a beta form. And if you've got it, um, it's it's a it's a, it's hard to come by, frankly, and uh, and so a lot of people are really excited about it and trying to get it. So I had that that capability, but but just wasn't necessarily comfortable live streaming yet, didn't know what it would take, what uh, what I needed to do differently. Um, and of course, live streaming, I'm stuck saying what I just said. I cannot edit that out. You have just heard it. There is no taking it back. Um, and so there's a little bit more pressure on the host um, to, uh, to, to not royally screw up at all points throughout the live stream. Um, and so what we did is, okay, so we, we had one take, um, the, we had the, the vision, the focus, it was going to be speaking to experts uh, in their particular field uh, to get their one take on a concept or an idea that which they had exposure to or had done research on or written a book about. Um, and there was also sort of a play on words because um, I wanted to emphasize very little post-production. So the uh, aspiration was to always land the show in one take, just get it done uh, and then share it with the world. And the focus of the show was going to be on the future of work, life, and culture. And that was a bit of an aperture expansion for me because I'd spent the last few years talking mostly about automation and technology, uh, robotic process automation and AI and machine learning, et cetera. Um, and so wanted to open that aperture, um, especially because One Take was now a Sykes production. And there's more background there. I won't um, waste your time on. Uh, but a Sykes production uh, meant this was this was a product uh, coming out from Sykes Enterprises. It's not an advertisement, uh, but it's just it's a sponsor effectively that allows us to do this um, fun adventure. Um, so that was one take. We had 36 shows. We have a lot more great stuff planned for you. Uh, more coming. But the intent was never to have a single sort of show on a network. Right, a Sykes production was meant to then have other people come and contribute their ideas and their passions to doing exactly this, to speak to guests, to talk about topics. 
And so with that, that is my long-winded um, lead up. Uh, with that, I could not be more thrilled to welcome my next guest and future partner, and that'll all make sense in a second, to the show, Orlando Haynes. Orlando, welcome to One Take. How are you? I'm doing great, Ian. I appreciate it. How are awesome. You? Okay. So Orlando, sorry for uh, keeping you in the green room as long as I did, um, but thought it was useful to sort of set that context now, um, don't want to don't want to steal too much of the the thunder or the punchline. But the idea is a Sykes production, the the network that is Sykes that had one take as a show. Now, drum roll, please, is going to have a second show on it, and that show belongs to you, sir. So um, so let's get there. But before we do, who is Orlando Haynes? Uh, yeah, that's a great question, right? Um, so I am or have been in the industry for about 16 years of talent acquisition, originally from New York, uh, family man, first and foremost. Uh, so, but the journey has been quite, quite phenomenal in talent acquisition. So there's nothing bad I can say about it. You know, you have bad moments, but I've never had a bad day in the industry. And so I've worked for some pretty notable companies, uh, which led me into to sites just based on my history and background. So, but I'm super excited uh, for this partnership, not only as an employee, but as a partner in crime as we join Mike's uh, to spread uh, the, uh, the Sykes message. Very cool. And for the record, or Orlando set that boom arm up for his microphone right before because because we're basically having this dueling competing thing where we're gonna we're gonna see who can out out gadget the other guy. Um, I've got this new tent right here that actually says the name of my show, so we need to get you one of those. Um, okay. and we'll get to what the name of your show is in a second. But okay, so so you had so you were in the you were in the military for a little yes. while, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about that. Yeah, so right out of high school, um, it, it's funny, short story, I was in line for college, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and I said, you know what, I wanted to travel. So I went down to the recruiting station for the military folks, uh, thought I was going to be in the Marines because I wanted to get super muscular and cut up and shoot guns, but a naval chief poked his head out and said, I can tell you the same thing that they will tell you six months later. I was uh, recruited into the Navy uh, over in Great Lakes, spent four years active there and then also transitioned after that to the Army National Guard for four years. So I got the weapons training that I wanted and got to travel the world, uh, notable countries like Dubai, Singapore, Australia. Uh, so it was a fun time and I keep those principles with me. That's outstanding. Well, thank you for your service, first and foremost. Uh, and so then you, you left the service and uh, went into, and it looks like you have a lot of experience in, in HR, in recruiting, in talent. So sort of walk me through what, what you've done leading up to Sykes, and then we'll, we'll delve into that in more detail. Yeah, absolutely. So initially I got out and I thought my path was going to be uh, more electrical engineering. Then I saw that was saturated. It was funny how I fell into recruiting because there's no degree or class to say, come out and be a recruiter. So in, during that journey, I was a candidate first for an organization that specializes in engineering. Long story short, went for an interview I uh, didn't get the job, but six months later, they called me back. And what I remembered most about that, Ian, was the fact on how they they basically handheld me through the entire process. They followed up, they back checked so that when I remembered who the can uh, who the company was that called um, a couple of interviews later, some tough interviews uh, in New York. And next, thing you know, my life in recruiting started and I, I've never looked back since then. That's outstanding. OK, so. So again, a caveat this. Mm -hmm. you know what? Here's what I'll do. So I'm going to give I'm going to get a bit of a background and context before I do. I'm going to welcome some more folks to the show. You are so much better than me at this, Orlando. <laughs> so um, I, I say that with deference, respect, and a bit of jealousy. Um, so who else? Uh, Sarah Taylor has joined. Hello, Russ Katzman. Hello, Rachel Boger. Thank you for joining. Derek Banker. Uh, Kate Thurgood from Lakeland. Hello, Kate. Um, Sarah Taylor. Uh, let's see, Robert Voci, Jay Ludgrove from London. Hello, Jay. Uh, Yvonne Rosier from Fayetteville. Dory Moore. Um, Maria D'Agostino. Uh, Shay Washington. Hello, Shay. Dane is thrilled that, thrilled that you made it to the Army. So you've got a, a fan in Dane. 
um, Michael Musto from Arizona, Bill Wyshynski uh, from Tampa. Hello, everybody. So, okay, so some context. Um, if you're not familiar with who Sykes is, it's a little mm -hmm. bit useful to know who Sykes is before we have this next uh, stage of the discussion. So anyway, so um, this is a Sykes production. This one take is um, Orlando show will be as well. Sykes is uh, effectively, it's an engagement services organization. 55,000 people around the world. We're in 23 plus countries. Um, we effectively work with the world's leading brands and help them to care for their customers. Uh, and there's all sorts of ways we do that. Um, some traditional call center work, um, chat. We've got some really cool stuff around precision learning and self-help services. We have automation because that's how I came to be at Sykes as they acquired a, a startup that I had done in RPA. Uh, and so Sykes does a lot of things for a lot of organizations, but but the heart, soul, and and focus, really the asset that Sykes has is people, right? I mean, we got buildings, we got branding, we got phones, tons and tons of phones, but we've got people, and that's what makes any organization like ours, and you know, there are a lot of peers of ours too who count on good people, mm -hmm. and you get good people through attracting and assessing and then recruiting and, and training and retaining those people. Orlando, you're a talent acquisition manager at Sykes. So walk me through that. What is talent acquisition and what do you do uh, in your day job? Great question, Ian. So talent acquisition is just like it says, it's just we're acquiring great talent. And the cool thing about Sykes is that it allows us the autonomy, right? To, to try new and different innovative things uh, so that we can attract talent. And one of the things that that's pretty cool, and I'm not just saying this because I work for Sykes, but it's something I've known and learned through working for Sykes is that we specialize in focusing on culture first uh, so that when we acquire those talents, and we do that through different platforms, through digital outreach, uh, social market, uh, marketing media uh, outreach as well, online events that we can do and post, or should I say pre-COVID, we were out in the community, right? So we wanted to make sure we made those connections with the community uh, to let them know who we are, what we do and how we can benefit. So that's a short story, but we've the good thing also is that we've never stopped hiring uh, during this process as we continue to hire uh, through this pandemic. That's awesome. And usually, uh, and I, I, perhaps I should have done that before this show because it would be really appropriate. But um, usually before I started every one take, I would always say just uh, and, and sincerely meant it. And you just verified that I sincerely meant it, um, that uh, we're always hiring. Uh, mm -hmm. to give us a call at jobs.sykes.com. Uh, specifically because, again, uh, enterprises still have customers, will continue to need to continue to serve them. And we've done a pretty darn impressive, in fact, fantastic and amazing job of, of moving a lot of people home, uh, enabling those that still need to be in buildings to be safe, to be socially distanced, um, and, and to, to maintain not only their health, but also their livelihood. And so there's a, there's a heavy emphasis that, that we make on that because, because you need your health, but you also need jobs. People need jobs, especially in light of this really stressful environment we're in where, where a lot of folks found themselves uh, without them. And so uh, we're, um, if nothing else, we're a job creator and it's a, it's a privilege and an honor to be in that position. And again, so people, good people make our services worth buying and make our partnerships with our clients successful. Uh, and we're able to do that by creating livelihood and opportunities for people. And that's what you do. So so tell me a little bit more about talent mm -hmm. acquisition. What's what's a day in the life of a talent acquisition manager look like? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. Uh, first and foremost, nothing could be done without the team support. Uh, so here at our Lakeland site, uh, I have a phenomenal team um, of three recruiters that really dive deep in uh, and are really passionate about bringing in the quality of folks. One of the cool things that the folks that we we hire is that we'll see them every day because we're hiring specifically for our site. And the same model, it goes off to our DLAN team, uh, uh, which is led by Maria um, and also my counterparts, Sharon and Megan uh, across the board. So I think the overall goal, again, is making sure that we're thoroughly assessing these folks uh, from a cultural ad, not just a cultural fit, but a cultural ad, and that they could technically do the job. But um, then again, 
that we make sure it's family first because it's really the agents that that do the heavy lifting. Yeah. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're supporting them in every step of the way. And their onboarding process is fun and that we're really celebrating them. That's that's outstanding. Okay, so a few different things based on that. So you said Lakeland. So uh, my bad, I should have said this, but so you mean Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland, so Florida. So you're based here in Florida, um, mm -hmm. uh, somewhat close to me here in Tampa. Uh, and we happen to have a center in, in Lakeland and, and in Deland. And uh, one day we may even be able to hang out near-ish each other and do one of these shows. Um, but for now, we're doing it um, from a distance. Um, from a distance. Uh, okay, so there's that one. Uh, the call out or a shout out to the team is outstanding. Thank you for that. Um, and thank thank them for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, uh, again, in in the era of COVID where safety and livelihood are paramount. Um, and this isn't just speaking about Sykes, this is speaking about organizations all over the place, all over the planet. And many of our peers as well, a lot of our peers um, have just done in incredible uh, sort of Herculean feats of, of um, maintaining their staff safety, letting people move home, setting them up to be able to do that, really attending to not only the technical needs of those people, but just the, just the, the the culture and the and the family and the personal needs as well. So it's not been easy, and we we lean on on the teams that are doing extraordinary jobs. Um, you did mention something I wanted I want to double click on. I love that phrase, double click, unpack. Um, um, that is, you said that it, it's not just a cultural fit, but a cultural add. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by cultural add? Well, I think uh, as we go through this pandemic, right, and some of the social and the rest of them that's unpacked itself, we have to look at as an organization, as a TA team, we have to look at what's going to add value for the future of work. Uh, so it's it used to be an old adage, right? Like-minded, uh, but I, I think that model is a little broken. So we need folks that can see into the future a little bit, be a little bit of visionaries, regardless of role uh, in, the, in the organization, but someone again, who can push the envelope, because I think without that, you an organization can miss uh, some innovation uh, in regards of the department they work in. So we need to find folks that can add value to the to the organization and give a different point of view and not just set, have the same thought process. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay, so so new new fun because uh, um, because you were you were the reason that we moved to this new platform where we can do this thing. So I'm excited about that. So we we can actually show the questions people ask which should encourage you to ask questions of the, of Orlando uh, and and David Weaver did. So thank you, David. Um, David asks, what would you consider to be the single biggest attribute we look for in a candidate? Great question, David. Uh, he's a cool guy, I met him a couple of times. Oh, don't kiss David's butt, just because he asked uh, good <laughs> David, you owe me, no. So um, yeah, I would definitely say, and that's a really good question, it's definitely the culture ad piece, right? Even if someone, is not as uh, their technical aptitude may not be in the call center space. Those are things we can train. You can't train culture, you know, um, added. So you can train technically. So someone who has a positive energy, who's excited to come to work, who's willing to serve, the rest I think we can train. Uh, as long as you bring uh, the minimal qualifications, uh, that, that would say, I would say is the pinpoint thing. You have a great attitude that makes the day go back faster. That's outstanding. Yeah. Good answer. Um, good answer. Great. Um, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, and if anyone else has questions, we will we will put you up as well and chastise you and and, uh, and then answer your question, hopefully. Um, OK, so so we've talked about your background. Mm -hmm. We talked about who Sykes is as context um, and then talent acquisition and the importance of finding great people. Uh, now, let's get to uh, this this fun adventure we're on. So, so I, as I mentioned with one take, I just uh, the, through luck, tenacity, begging, whatever it was, I was able to do live streaming over LinkedIn mm -hmm. and through um, actual valuable content and interesting guests, you also were able to get <laughs> LinkedIn live streaming capability. Uh, and so uh, um, thank you, credit to you, you, you pinged me and said, hey, 
Um, what do you think about this idea? And I loved it. Um, and so Sykes, uh, a Sykes production effectively is becoming a network. It's like Sykes TV or Sykes radio or both. Um, and so now we have this really awesome opportunity to have a second, um, to have a second host, have a second show and a, a different focus. So mine again, future of work, life and culture and speaking to, to folks about that. What is your show called and what is it about? Awesome. Awesome. So it's called Career Talks. Um, and it was great working with your your team to kind of figure that out and what the logo and everything would look like. And let me take a quick step back in and just thank Sykes overall for the opportunity uh, for my leadership, Dory, um, Marcy, all the way up to the VP level uh, for accepting uh, this, this, I call it a pitch to, to the executive team uh, for allowing me to partner with you guys. But it's really gonna be focused around uh, career development. So my, my main focus and my passion is about equipping, uh, educating and empowering job seekers uh, with real time advice that will can help them propel their career. So I'm gonna really focus in talent acquisition, uh, professionals as guests, some executive coaching, some recruiting and staffing and some HR professionals. Uh, so that can give a good culmination of what's happening now, what tools and tips and techniques you need to propel yourself post COVID or even during COVID and post COVID. Uh, but it's really going to be centered around how do we impact um, workforce uh, going forward and equipping this, these amazing talented people that are displaced and those that are coming out of school and, and, and need a place to, uh, to land their career. That I, I, I mean, who, <laughs> first of all, um, that is so relevant to, to everybody, not so many people to all the people that is relevant to all the people. And so I am, I'm so excited about it. Uh, you've, you've had uh, guests on your live stream, um, before I've watched it, you're an outstanding host. Um, and that's annoying. So I will continue watching and learning from you. Uh, but no, you're an, you're an outstanding host. You've got great guests. Give us a sense of what are some of the, who are some of the, the first few guests you'll have now that we've sort of officially launched Career Talks as a Sykes production. Uh, so yeah. who are the guests and what are the topic areas you're going to be focusing on? Yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited about the first guest, which her name is Dawn Graham. Uh, she is an uh, executive coach, a TEDx speaker, uh, as well as a, a, a career coach. I forgot her official title, I apologize, but she works at um, Wharton, School of Wharton. So she has this great book called Career Switch, uh, Career Switchers. So she talks about how the, the folks that are really good and want to switch careers and kind of outlines the path on how they do that. Um, following that, it will be a young lady by the name of Claire Petrie. A uh, phenomenal career coach as well. I have a list of folks. Roger Lear, he's actually local here in Florida. He runs orlandosjobs.com and hosts one of the largest job fairs in the Orlando market. So I'm excited to talk to him about the importance of job fairs, even going virtual and what that looks like. So, uh, yeah, the lineup is insane. It's insane. That is very cool. Um, okay, so so let's... And you've been doing this for a while, as you said. It's it's an absolute passion. Um, you've written about it. You've talked about it. You've got um, it, you've got a, a career in it. L let me let me seek some of your guidance for our listeners um, now, live and, and in the future when they tune into the show. Um, it's crazy out there right mm -hmm. now. Right. Mm -hmm. The environment, as you said, it's tough. Um, organizations are, are struggling. Individuals are struggling. So what are, I guess, in light of that, as you said, during COVID and to probably serve anybody after COVID, what are you, um, what are you hearing? What are you suggesting to that first time job candidate? person who's coming right out of school. I, I imagine you you meet with many of them through job fairs and in your in your um, line of work at, at uh, Sykes. So and I'll, I'll, I'll set you up because I want to ask you about those who are starting out, um, those who are switching jobs as uh, similar to the, the book you mentioned in your in your your guest coming up. And then those who were who may find themselves dealing with with being out of work right now as a result of COVID. But first, I'll start with 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 the freshers, the kids coming right out of college. What do you what do you generally advise them to to focus on and, and think and do? Yeah. So the what, first thing I would say is that the old model is broken. 
meaning you just can't post and pray and hope that your resume is going to surface and you get the job. So just completely kind of eliminate that model thinking that's that's <laughs> going to work for you now. I think one of the common themes that my peers are saying too, and what we we're talking about now is just high visibility uh, and what are the separators to, for you to get noticed in the market, right? And one of the things is content creation, uh, video content being notable on LinkedIn, right? It's a major platform, over 650 million users. People know what LinkedIn um, can do, mm -hmm. but I don't think they know the personal branding, what you can build beyond that to be a, a candidate that separates you from the mass. So one of the major points, and, and I'll, uh, again, I'll pinpoint it there, is that uh, content creation is, is key. Networking is still key. Uh, strategizing and being intentional about your job search. So again, the old model doesn't work. You can't just post and hopefully it, it, someone will find you because right, the, the current rate is about 500 resumes probably per post. So that's, likelihood that's one. <laughs> well, and, and you know, it, it's interesting. I think that I'll speak from my own personal um, lens, two different age groups of that lens. There's the me age group and then there's my kids age group. Um, I love this stuff, right? I, and and obviously, if you're if you're foolish, foolish enough to do a live stream show and mm -hmm. put yourself out there and have the guts to just hopefully say things that you don't regret saying live, um, and and the the tenacity to go get the guests as you've done and um, and to to structure the content and put it, then then creating content is your passion is what you love doing. Um, but it might not be the thing that you're most comfortable doing. Um, I, I guess I, I've, I've played at it for a while. I mean, heck, I, going all the way back to my childhood, I liked doing theater. And so maybe that, that lends to this. Um, then I look at my kids, eight and 10 years old. They're on their iPads too much. Um, and I will take full responsibility for that. But um, but they're on like Facebook, um, uh, uh, Facebook friends or whatever it's called. Um, they're they're zooming, they're FaceTiming. I mean, they're not only are they used to this medium, but then they also watch a bunch of schlock on YouTube, uh, which again I let them watch. But uh, but it's it's mostly kids, a little bit older than them, who mm -hmm. are absolutely digital native, content native, completely comfortable filming anything and everything about their lives. And for some of those kids, it's, it's pretty darn lucrative. They, they'll never have to look for a job. They've, they're covered. But, uh, mm -hmm. um, but to your point, um, for those kids in, in college, high school, explore your passions, do so well creating content, and, and you're saying that that'll serve them well and help them stand, uh, stand head and shoulders above their peers who may, be, uh, may just be hoping on resume and, and job fair. Yeah. And so just to add on that, Ian, is that one of the things I wanted to point out, too, is that as I interview these guests and like you said, love it. I love doing this. We have to talk to so many interesting people is that uh, I hope that job seekers understand that they there is a mindset shift that needs to happen and they should market themselves and prepare themselves as an entity, not as a job seeker, but as an entity, Sykes, Coca-Cola, whoever they know their avatar. They build a marketing plan, they build a target and how they're going to attack. Job seekers need to have that same kind of global thought process when it comes to their career. I love that as an entity and not as an individual. That's cool. OK, so if you are let's move quickly to switching jobs. If you're looking to switch jobs, you still have to do the same things, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. still need to, you need to think of yourself as an entity. And and maybe at that point, if you're further along in your career, um, you, you have some more experience or perspective at least, and perhaps you can, you, you've, you've honed in on the topic areas like you and I have that, that you want to create more content around. So, right. so what sort of guidance do you give to, to the career switchers? Yeah. So uh, great question again. So I would think though to, to better understand what career transition versus a career jump. So uh, in my mind, when I hear career transition, it means you have a plan in place. Right. You haven't left one source of income without a plan to gain another, uh, except for if you just jump. Now, that's a risk. But you have to you know, you have to dip your toe in the water to see what you're going to look at, whether it be a, uh, an income loss because uh, you're starting completely over. If if you're mm -hmm. transitioning from um, different functions, which is what uh, Dawn, my first guest, will speak about is the difference between changing functions 
to changing industries. And I'll let her speak to that on August 5th. So make sure to watch. And, and also how much research does a, acquire more education? Uh, that's where comes networking, partnering with folks to gain that insight before you, you make the, the switches to also do the research first and plan it out. Uh, so it doesn't put you into a, a, you know, a financial bind because you just fell through and leaked off with your passion without, um, a, you know, a viable plan in place. I like that. Good, good, good advice. Okay. So let's get to that, that final category. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have, have found themselves out of work right now. And, and I know that's scary. And so what sort of advice, um, are you hearing uh, that those folks should should embrace? What sort of advice might you give to anybody who's in that situation right now? Right. So first thing I would tell folks, don't necessarily panic. I know it's hard to say that um, and know that it's not your fault, right? This was an unforeseen act that has impacted the world, right? So it's not your fault. Second, I would tell you is to deal with the emotional state first uh, because you don't want to move too quickly and come to find out you don't want to go back in the workforce. You may want to go start, you know, the next lemonade stand or uh, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube channel. So really take the time. If, if you're in a position that you can do that, do a short assessment, pause for a second, know where you're at emotionally that you can, you know, progress back into the workforce or this may be a time for you to pivot. Uh, but I think it's a good time too to to really really assess where you're at if you're looking to career switch or get back in. But then get a plan, get a coach, uh, really di deep dive uh, your situation before just um, knee jerk reaction. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Nope. Great point. Um, let's put up a. There's. We got a question from um, from Bill Wyshynski. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's see if Jim brings me back. There we go. I'm back. Go. Uh -huh. um, uh, Bill Wyshynski just asked a question, wanted to, to address that in, I think he was asking in relation to the switching jobs comment. I think, Bill, and uh, you can confirm if I've got that right. But he was asking, um, effectively, don't do it in 2020, question mark. And so the, the idea is, I mean, do you dare think of, of, of leaping at all, um, making the jump, changing roles? Um, I'll take a crack at that first, then love to hear what you have to say, Orlando. But um, I, I would say that while some industries are, are clearly being impacted uh, mm -hmm. right now, other it, it negatively impacted negatively, others are are taking off in ways that um, you know some are somewhat predictable and others are miraculous. I mean, if you think about the acceleration to um, the virtual, the digital acceleration in all of these different services that relate to um, catering to uh, a, a consumer's needs, uh, given the, the natural constraints now of, of an inability to travel or a, a choice to, to stay socially distant for, for safety reasons, um, there are some incredible opportunities out there. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, Orlando, You've got you've got the ability to create a YouTube channel or to I mean lemonade stand might not be the the best idea right now um, unless it's a <laughs> unless unless it's a distant lemonade stand but um but I mean, you get the point I mean it's there are some really good opportunities here um, still in in light of um, the economic situation and in fact in some cases because of the economic situation so your thoughts on on whether 2020 is a year to to make a leap. Yeah, I think you, you, you kind of started off um, definitely on that right path. It's, it depends on the industry. If you're if you're not doing the research to know what's impacted um, and you just leap again versus transition, then, yes, it is not a good time. But if you're doing the research and trying to wage your bet, like it's almost like following the stock market. Right. Are you going to short the, short the industry? Or are you going to go long? You're going to be bullish. Right. So you have to watch the different sectors and see what's consistently performing before you make that transition. If it's not the one you're looking to transition to, then look at a plan B to sustain you until it's time. Yeah, yeah. No, that's perfect. And, mm -hmm. and I guess uh, maybe, Maybe on this is this is perhaps not requested um, career feedback, but I, I I think most of most folks I speak to still say that they're trying to figure out what they want to do when they grow up. So mm -hmm. I think to to be 
naturally to be comfortable with that fact that you're always um, always uh, assessing your opportunities and evolving and following passions. If you realize that's sort of the the resting pulse and the in the the constant state of things, then you're more comfortable with change uh, because you're always looking at how to to take advantage of the situation and your passions and and your knowledge. Right. Um, okay. So we we have only a few minutes left. Um, Paula set us up um, really well with the question about how do you get notified of your future live events. Um, so let's be even even let's expand that question and and discuss. So uh, career talks coming at you um, very soon. You've already had some over your LinkedIn um, profile already, mm -hmm. but talk to me about dates, about how people can find you, follow you, and uh, other ways that they might interact with your content. Absolutely, uh, and thank you, Paula, for the question. And just to know, follow me, not Ian, just, just me. <laughs> we've, we've had, we've had uh, issues here that this is going to be ugly because I have I have listened and watched Orlando shows. And not only is he good and he's outstanding at navigating the, the three ring circus of both looking, listening, asking, but also coordinating the tech. Um, but then he's also got this, the, the audience members are, are pinging questions at him and he's handling it really well. So it's, um, it's frustrating how darn good he is. So, okay, so go ahead, um, Orlando, with your darn show. I uh, appreciate it. So Paula, definitely connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and it'll, the, fish, the official launch will be August 5th. So every Wednesday, I host a new uh, career expert at 12 noon. Uh, that'll share their tips, tools, and techniques for, for folks to, again, propel their career. So again, August 5th is the official launch. And every Wednesday after that at 12 noon, Eastern time. See, right there, right there, that's like structured and organized. Uh, my, my poor team has to put up with me doing it all sorts of different times. But so Wednesday, 12 known Eastern Standard Time. Right. And, um, and, and painfully consistently, he's got guests lined up for a long time, which is really exciting. So I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing them. Are there any other ways? So you've got your LinkedIn um, profile that they need to follow. We'll put that in the show notes. Um, any other uh, channels you've got? Is it Twitter or Instagram or do you have a TikTok channel? Should we no know about that? Okay, no TikTok. Okay. I'm too old for TikTok. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, 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 uh, I, or, <laughs> so Facebook, you can see there, uh, it says Career Growth Convo, uh, but you still should be able to find it under Orlando Hang. So you'll see our live stream there as well. And I'm just now getting to develop the, the YouTube piece because I wanted to wait until we rebranded and got this going. And you'll see that um, come alive as well. So outstanding. Well, Orlando, first and foremost, thank you for being a guest on One Take. Uh, thank you for being a, 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 an important, a valuable um, and, and value adding, um, not just culture fitting um, member of the Sykes family. I, I know that uh, the folks in, in Lakeland really count on you and we do to, to find great talent so that we can continue to serve our clients and create the experiences that their customers uh, expect and, and are um, thrilled by. Uh, but also, thanks for doing this with me. I think this is this uh, Sykes production uh, channel with multiple shows uh, allows people to see more of our, our collective perspective, more of our passions. Um, I'd love to see just how we how we continue to 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 either um, make fun of one another and uh, and interrupt each other's shows or or in addition contribute to one another. Um, but would love to to have you on one take again and hear about um, how career talks is going. Would love to crash career talks at some point and uh, and and really uh, I think what you've put together already and what you've got coming is just an incredible asset to to everybody anybody in a career looking to to change careers looking to to evolve um in the, in their own uh careers this is going to be the show to tune into so i wish you the absolute best of luck in everything you do thanks for joining the uh the the sykes um enterprises family or sykes network family we got to come up with a better name for that um and yeah uh, any, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the last word to to you, sir. Any any last thoughts or uh, or comments for our audience? Yeah. So uh, again, thank you, Ian, for the opportunity. 
uh, Sykes executive team, my leadership team, uh, the team that supports us here uh, at the Lakeland location, uh, just, just for all the overall support. It's been phenomenal. I'm excited. Uh, obviously, my first priority is talent acquisition manager for this location, but I want to bring value as much as possible, not only to external guests, but to our internal folks as well uh, that will help them with their career journey. I do, I do have to rib you there because it sounded like you were talking to your bosses. Yes, he will focus on his day job, but, but he's also going to do this, which is very much a part of his day job, because I think if you do this right, you're going to have people all over the, I mean, not only the, the, the Lakeland area, but the world um, chatting with you about how they can, uh, how they can become part of, of this exciting family. Uh, but I will also, I will leave with this final call out of a note. Um, and Jim, if you could put up Kate Thurgood's most recent post, Kate just said, great show. This was a nice break from the work day. So Orlando, not only are you taking a break from your work day, which you had to basically say to other people, but Kate's also taken a break as a result of the show. So, so you have that on your shoulders as well. So, um, so thank you, Kate, for your comment. Um, thanks, Orlando, for, for being a guest and for going on this journey with me. I wish you the absolute best of luck. And thank you, everybody who joined us on One Take today. I hope you're all uh, safe, healthy, healthy, well, sane, and, uh, and look forward to, to having you join us on the next One Take. Thanks, everybody.